All right, so 6.1, we're going to talk about a new uh, type of function. We've talked about quadratics. We've talked about cubics. We've talked about uh, roots. We've talked about um, all different kinds of functions that we can have. And this one that we're going to start discussing is called exponential. And exponential functions look like this every single time. And there are some rules over here. Um, A is not allowed to be zero. Can anyone tell me why A can't be zero? Because then it would make everything that is multiplied by zero. Yeah, B uh, is not allowed to equal one. Why can't B be one? Because it would just multiply back to itself. Yeah, one to any power would just be one. Um, and then finally, B actually has to be greater than zero. How come I wrote it like this? How come I just didn't say, wait, B just has to be bigger than one? How come, how come I didn't write that? Why did I write it like this? There is a difference between this and this, and this one would be wrong. Because it, you go. Uh, because it can be anything between zero and one, just not zero or one. Yes, there are numbers, right? We're so used to elementary school where our numbers go. If I said, what's the next number after zero? A lot of you would just automatically say one, and that's not true. You need to know what you're going up by in order to know what the next number after zero is. If I'm going by whole numbers, yes, the next number after zero is one. If I'm going up by tenths, the next number after zero is point 0.1, right? So like, um, and, and there really is, if you think about it, how many numbers are between zero and one, there's an infinite amount of numbers between zero and one. You can't count how many numbers there are between zero and one because all you have to do is, if you did this, you said, oh, that's the smallest number, right? All you have to do is just add another zero and then put the one. And you could keep going for that infin infinitely. So kind of hopefully it starts to open your eyes a little bit to this is that, you know, there's not an, uh, a set amount of numbers between zero and one. There's an infinite amount. Um, so that's why we can't say this where it's just bigger than one because there are numbers between zero and one. Um, and so this is what the function looks like. So we're going to start looking deeper into the behaviors of it, um, the graphs of it. And so we're going to start off with a basic one. Now, hopefully some of you are looking at this and going, Mr. Martin, that doesn't meet your what you said it was going to look like. It actually does. What am I supposed to have in this? If you looked at my generic form, it was supposed to say like f of x or y, and it was supposed to equal what? What did we just write? A times b to the x power. And so you're hopefully, you're seeing, well, you have a b, right? Your b is two, you have the x, and some of you are going, but there's no a, but there is an a. What number would be in front of here that would be my a? Would it be one? Right, because one times uh, anything is just itself, right? So two to the X times one is still two to the X. So my A equals one and my B equals two. That's gonna be something we gotta talk about here in just a second. Um, I've prepped you for this throughout the year about what can happen here. Um, and it's not gonna, I'm not gonna discuss it right now, but there's gonna be something funky coming up with, with A in just a minute. All right, so let's go through this, whoops. And when, what have I told you no matter what? Let's say you forget everything I ever taught you. But someone asks you to graph something and you remember one thing. What did I tell you will always work no matter what someone asks you to graph? What can you always make and you can make the graph based on this thing? A chart. Yes, we can always make an X and Y chart. So let's start there. I put a zero in. That means my X becomes zero. Anything to the zero power except for zero is one. So two to the zero power is one. 
if I put a one in for X, that would read two to the first power, which is two. And I'll go ahead and start graphing this. So zero, one, one, two, three, four, five, and then let's say we put a two in, two to the second power is four. Be careful, it's not two times two, it's two times two because there's two twos. So what I mean by that is two to the third is two times two, which is four times another two, which is eight. A lot of kids put six here, that would be wrong. It is not two times three, this is two times two times two. This says there are three twos there. All right, so that's enough for that. So uh, two, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. And hopefully you can start to see this thing is like a curve, which it is. Now, I'm not finished. We need the back side of this. What happens if I put a negative one in? Does anyone remember the rule for um, whoa. You switch the denominator and numerators. Or it's like the opposite. Of uh, the so careful on your wording. You have the idea right, Orist. Um, so if I have X to the negative two, um, what happens is any number can be written as a fraction and the negative only switches its location. So this goes down to the bottom. And since there's nothing left up top, I put a one over it. So it becomes this. And the reason I say it's not the reciprocal is because if I had X Y to the negative two, the negative two only belongs to the Y. Therefore, the Y will be the only thing that moves down. The X will stay up top over Y squared. See how I had a X still up there so I didn't have to put a one. When you move it down and there's nothing left, you put the one. The one that was down here did not flip up to the top. This is not the reciprocal. Only what's touching the negative gets moved. So like right here, only the Y got moved down. Am I making myself clear on that? Hello? Yeah. Is that making sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Remember, you guys have the emotes. You can just give me a thumbs up or something so I can see that you guys are good. Can you go over it one more time for me? Ask, ask me a question, Taylor. What's the part that's tripping you up? Let me know. Uh, what I understand everything, but what did you say about the ones again? This one right here did not move up to the top. It's because when I moved this down, there was nothing left up there, so I put a one up there. Oh, OK, I got it. Some kids think that it's reciprocal, but then when they get here, they move both of them down and that's not what happens. So like if I had X, Y to the negative two over Z to the negative three. So what happens here is the negative moves its location. So the negative sends the Y down, but it, then this negative actually sends the Z up. And so my answer would be X, Z to the third over Y to the second. And when you move its location, the negative goes away. But notice the negative power did not change the sign of this. This number was positive. It's still positive over here. So the negative has nothing to do with it changing signs. So let's go apply that to what we just did here. What would happen then if I have two to the negative one? Well, we said anything that has a negative, you can make it a fraction because it has a negative now gets sent down. Since there's nothing left, I put a one up. And so one over two to the first or just one over two. So if I put a negative one in, I get a half. What would happen if I put a negative two in? Well, that would turn into two to the negative two, which is equal to the negative sends it down, and this becomes one over two to the second or one over four. And so this becomes one half, this becomes a one fourth. If you kept going, negative three would turn into a one eighth. I love it when my screen does that. And what are you noticing this thing is going to do? Approach zero, but never get there. Why would it never get there, Kelly? 
Because x can't be zero. It's not going to be zero. It's not, I don't know. It's not x that's not going to be zero. It's y that will never be zero. But why will y never be zero? Look what happens even when I put a negative in here. It turns into a fraction, right? And what's the only way a fraction could be zero is if the numerator turned to what number? A zero. And is there any way that this numerator is going to kick to a zero? No. Now, if I put in two to the negative hundredth, that is going to turn into one over two to the hundredth, which two to the hundredth is a massive number. It's huge. But even one over a million is still technically bigger than what? One millionth. Zero. It's bigger than zero. And no matter what, this number right here will never ever be zero. So this graph will keep approaching it. What do we call that when something approaches something but never ever touches it? Asymptote. Yes, so this is y equals zero is the asymptote for this. Are there any questions on that so far? I'm just going to cover this really quick and then I'm going to move on. Someone read that to me. F, uh, F of X equals negative three to the X power. That is wrong. Someone else want to try? Negative one times three to the x power. Why does that make a difference, Orist? Because like negative one is a that tells it to go down. So why, why does this make a difference? Because it only targets the three. When I do order of operations, Orist, what do I do first? Parentheses. Three. Exponents. I do three to the power. Then I apply the negative. So when I put in, like, let's say I had, if I want, this does not read negative three to the X, by the way. This reads the opposite of three to the X. If I wanted negative three to the X, it would have to look like this. The parentheses make a huge difference. If I do, if I put a one in here, this right here, this answer for this question is negative three. If I do that, uh, sorry, let's do this. If I square this one, this answer right here is a negative nine, because what I do is I apply the squared first, three squared is nine, then I take the opposite and my answer is negative nine. If I write it like this, this is read as negative three times negative three, and I kick at a positive nine. These two things are not the same. So that's why this is not read as negative three to the X power. It is read as the opposite of three to the X. And so what would happen, which we've talked about in the past, is if I put a zero in, I go three to the zero is one, and then I apply the negative, I get a negative one out. If I put a one in here, this I go three to the first power, which is three, then apply the negative, I get a negative three. So this negative right here is going to flip the graph over. Normally our graph when it's um, exponential looks like that. This graph is going to look more like this. And we'll get into that further later on. I'm going to redo that again, but just to give you an idea. But this negative order of operations matters, right? It's what drives the entire thing of mathematics. So this right here is three to the X, then apply the negative. So we don't read it as negative three. This would be as read as negative three to the X. 
I know it sounds like a, a little thing, but it is is not. It is monstrous. It's the difference between getting questions right and getting them wrong. All right, so here we go. Next one we're going to try. Again, we're going to make an X and Y chart and kind of look at what happens here. If I put a zero in, anything to the zero power is one, so this turns into a one, and then one times five is five. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Like I said, you can give me just thumbs up. You don't have to unmute. You can just give me a thumbs up if you see what you understand what I'm doing. If I put a one in, one half to the first power is a half. A half times five. Please do not change this to a decimal. This is five times one half. Top times top. Five times one is five. One times two is two. So five halves which is about two and a half. So I go, or it is two and a half. So I go one, one, two and a half. There's where that mark is. If I put a two in here, one half squared, one half squared means one half times one half, which is one fourth, one fourth times five, five over one times one fourth, five fourths. So five fourths is my answer, which is just a little bigger than one. So I'm gonna go two, and just over one. And finally, if I put a three in here for this side, for the right side of this graph, that would be like one half times one half times one half. Two times two is four times two is eight. One times one times one is one, so I get one eighth. Five over one times one eighth turns into five eighths. And five eighths is just a little bit bigger than half. So somewhere in there. And again, hopefully you're noticing this thing is then going to get here and start chasing my asymptote that is still there. My asymptote did not get moved at all, so my asymptote is still y equals zero. And now we got to go to the other side. So now I got to go, okay, how do I put in a negative one in here? Well, one half to the negative one. This is really this negative one belongs to the one and it belongs to the two. Since it belongs to both of them, you noticed, hopefully, both of them are going to switch. The one's going to come down, the two is going to go up. So when it's like this, this is like the reciprocal. So this would turn into just a two over one or just a two. So when I put the one in right here, I get a two out. Two times five is ten. So if I get a negative one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It goes all the way up to here. And you can see that it's going to continue going up. Just for to give you the answer, if I put a negative two in, the negative two would flip this. So I'd be thinking five to the two to the second, because this would be reciprocal because of that. The bot one would go down, the two would go up. And then two to the second is four times five, which would be twenty. So it would be way up there. Are there any questions on that graphing right now? No questions? Sorry, I had to sneeze. Oh, bless me. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Bless me. Appreciate it. All right. You guys are a very small, like, quiet crowd today. I don't know what's going on. So, beginning of the year, you were taught these translations. Like, you were supposed to know if I had x minus 2 squared plus 3, you were supposed to learn this moves it to the right to... And this moves it up three. And I told you, the faster you learn those transitions, 
the easier it's going to be because it's going to keep being the same thing. Well, that same thing happens here. If I have x, f of x equals 3x plus 2, this right here is going to tell me that it's going to move it up 2, and that moves everything up. So normally my f of x function was just 3x. That's the parent. No plus 2, right? Well, if I look at my x and y chart for this one, if I put a 0 in, I get a 1 out. Well, this is telling me everything should be moved up two so y or x doesn't change so it's still zero but instead of being zero one it should be zero three because up doesn't change this but it changes that up two means i add two to that so that's where i got the three and if you check it if you put a zero in here three three is zero is one and then one plus two is three so it did work same thing if you put a one in right that would turn into a three it should move it up to, so this should be now 1, 5. Well, what happens if I put a 1 in here? If I put a 1 in, 3 of the first is 3, plus 2 is 5. Boom. So this still moves it up and down. Outside moves it up and down. If I have f of x, 3x minus 2, this inside moves it left and right in the opposite way, I think. So this actually moves it to the right, 2. So if I had my OG which would just be the 3 to the x, that would be 0, 1. This says it should move it to the right 2, so that would affect this. So that means that my x would move right 2, which would mean put it at 2, comma 1. Well, let's see if that works. What happens when you put a 2 in here? 2 minus 2 is 0, and 3 to 0 kicks out a 1, so it does work. So inside moves it left and right opposite way, I think. Outside moves it up and down. And we already did the other one. When I have a negative here, the negative is going to flip it, right? So this right here is going to be a vertical um, flip. So like we said, this thing is normally facing like this. And because this negative, it's actually going to be facing that way. When I do move things uh, up and down, because my horizontal asymptote is affected up and down, it is not affected left or right. Like if I asked you to take this line, and move it left, it would still be the same line. But if I take ask you to take this line and move it up to, it would now be up here. So when we have f of x equals 3x minus 2, the first thing I do is I drop my, I know my asymptote, which is normally at y equals 0, gets dropped down 2 as well, so 1, 2. So this is where my horizontal asymptote is going to be. Then I make my X and Y chart. And I know it should come through something like that. And again, if I put a, a zero when the zero turns this to one, one minus two is negative one, zero, one, which is that point right there. Any questions?